All right, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbomb, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the damn house down and rebuilding it twice a week. Every Monday and Thursday, you can catch us on here with fire guests, just like today. Daniel, it is fantastic to have you on the show today. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited as well, but before we really dive into it, why don't you tell all the construction champions out there a little bit about yourself, what excites you about the construction industry, and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Yeah, well, my name is Daniel DeGalbo. I am the senior production manager at Southwest Industrial Electric, and I've been doing it for about 10 years. I've been with Southwest for about eight years, and yeah, I just, I love it going out every single day and getting to create something new, usually taking something that's terrible or something that's not there and making it new, good, safe, and and great. And it's just a constant challenge and a constant puzzle every single day of my life. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I love it. I know I ran production for a while. I know how, you know, it can be exciting yeah. and it can be interesting at the same time. It's got its highs and it's got its lows. <laughs> Every single day. And Absolutely. You never know what, what that phone call is going to bring when you get on the phone. Yeah, you never do know. But that's <laughs> what can be exciting about it sometimes, too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I love it. I love the challenge. I love the pressure. I like to I like to deal with it and just sort of figure it out. And you're that you're sort of usually the voice of reason in a in kind of a uh it can be a pretty wild industry sometimes with a lot of emotions and people want things done and you know, you're just there to, to get the job done each time. So that, that's what keeps me going. At the end of the day, that's all we can do is just get the job done. So that's right. That's I'm right. super excited for our conversation today and we're just going to dive right in there. We're going to ask you the million dollar question and that is what makes a construction champion? That is a great question. I've thought a lot about this question. I think that what makes a construction champion as a as a a person who's, you know, the actual technicians and things like that, I think that it's someone that the guys that succeed the most are people that take the most pride in their work. And no matter what anybody says, they're going to take their product to be the absolute best product that they are proud of. I always know when someone's usually done a good job is they're originating, sending photos to me, they're sending pictures, they're showing off their work. And if someone's doing that, it's usually a really good sign that they will do quite well in the industry. Mm. That, it, that, that's what I think ultimately as a person. And I think that's like the ethos of our company also, as we really strive from the top down is like, get a great product for the customer. The money will come, you know, but if you do the right thing, in our industry, it's electrical. So the right, you know, electrical per code, and it's a great install, you know, that is priority. And, and if all of our guys are doing that, then the money's going to come, the customers will come, we'll keep growing. It's when that usually slips out that I've seen cust uh, companies start to fail and, and technicians, and we've had technicians, obviously, that come and go. And usually the ones that, that aren't, they don't, they don't have pride, they don't, they're kind of there to collect a paycheck. And it's like, ah, they're not, they're not, you know, they're never going to make it mm. and they don't. So that's what I think sums up my answer to that question is, is really taking pride in their work and, and wanting to do the exact right thing every time. I love it because yeah. that is, that is so true. Like in order to really be a champion, you do have to have pride in what you do and how good you are at it. Right. And that I think I can really be uh, like, we don't look at that enough because a lot of times we look at that as, Oh, well, oh, here we got another guy that just wants to show everybody what he can do. And he thinks he's so good, but at the end of the day, aren't we supposed to be that? Like yeah. if it's your job, aren't you supposed to be damn good at it? Absolutely. And, and, and I think that when, I can always tell when guys like I ask for photos and they don't send it. I'm like, there's something wrong. And there usually, there always is. And when you're just getting just floods of photos where you're like, you're, you're filling up my phone with photos. It's the best sign in the world. And those guys always go on to succeed super strong. And 
They want to show it. They want everyone to be proud of it. They want to bring the customer over and show the customer and they're excited about it. And finding those, those employees and those technicians are, that's, that's, that's super important. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you go about doing that? Or I guess it's staining that culture, creating an environment where that, that can flourish. How do you do that as the leader? I think that a big thing I'm always telling, like even like super new guys, I don't care if you started with us a day ago and you don't know anything is like, you got to ask questions. Like when I first started, I started this kind of, I didn't know very hardly anything. And I would ask my boss at the time, who's actually still my boss. I asked him so many questions. I would bug him with questions, just bug. I was constantly asking, why is this? Why is that? And he'd be like, I, give, give me a second. I'm trying to figure it out. Stop <laughs> asking me questions. Cause he was on the site with me at the time. And I would ask so many questions. So I'm always telling the you guys, like, ask questions. You don't get something. Just ask, just ask the question. If we don't know, we'll find out, you know, but constantly be asking questions and constantly be trying to learn. It's when the guys, you explain something and they're like, okay, cool. And you're like, there's no way, you know, all this, you need to ask me like 10 questions. You should be asking questions. And, you know, I think that Sometimes in society, asking questions is sort of looked down like, oh, you don't know, you should already know. And it's like, we're in construction. Nobody knows everything. And if a guy says he knows everything, he's he's a liar. He does not. There's nobody that knows everything. And he's the first one away from. Every project can be different. Like it's stuff changes so fluently in construction that it's hard to know everything. Yeah, you can't. And in different industries, like I might go to, if I, we don't do any residential, but if I went to a residential job site, I would have a million questions because it's, it's all different parts. I mean, I'm going to understand the fundamentals of things. Nothing's going to blow up, but like, there's so many, it's, 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 it's almost a different little industry mm-hmm. inside of the overall industry. And so even in our line of work, we might be doing work in a, a plant and an industrial side. And then next day you're going to an office building and they're, they're totally different. They're just, there's a different set of things you're doing. And so you have to ask questions and you have to keep asking until you fully understand it. If you don't get it, don't let me walk away. If I'm your manager, Mm. same thing. If I don't get something, I'm not letting my boss walk away until I fully get it. And I'm like, I got a game plan here. And I think that's so crucial. And it's so missing in the, in the, at least in our field, in the electrical, because there's a lot, but probably I would imagine every single construction industry. Well, I I think like you hit the nail on the head when you said like, God, like it's frowned upon to have questions when people show up, like they're like, oh, well, I don't want to ask because they probably just assume I know this and I don't want to get fired or I don't want to be that guy. But like the only way to continuously get better is to be willing to ask questions, because like you said, we don't not everybody knows everything like that's not the job, (laughs) right? Exactly. And I think even, even people that have been doing it for 30 years will come to our company to work. And it's like, they might've done 30 years doing underground utility work, or they might've been 30 years in the commercial world, but then they come to our world and they don't know. And it's like, and that's fine, but it's when they're trying to pretend like they know, then they'll mess something up. And then it costs a lot of money because they've damaged now a piece of equipment that costs a million bucks. And it's like, great, that sucks. Um, but yeah, I think that's how I, that's usually what I'm trying to tell my guys, like, please ask me the questions. Call me at midnight. Like if you're doing an overnight job and you think I'm sleeping and you don't want to wake me up, I would a million times rather get that phone call in the middle of the night than get a phone call the next morning that something, something went disastrously wrong. Like, give me the phone call, yeah. please, you know, well, begging for it. <laughs> yeah, let's dive into that because I yeah. relate with that with what you're saying and trying to create that culture or create that environment where guys are okay reaching out even at weird times or with what they would consider maybe a stupid question but like creating an environment where they are they feel empowered to reach out how how are you doing that because that's a that's a herder to get over because people think (laughs) Oh, I'm nothing but a bother. He's going to be mad, but it truly is the opposite. Like the opposite's what we feel. Yeah, you're totally right. I think that in every company, and it always starts from the top down. And the founder and owner of, of our company, 
he's a huge proponent of asking him questions. He does. He says, my door is open. I don't care who you are. You have a, you have a technical question, you know, come up and see me. I've seen him be in the middle of something pretty crazy. And I'll walk up with a question and he'll just stop what he's doing and he'll take it. I remember early on in my career, I called him at like 2 AM. I woke him up and I was terrified. I couldn't reach, I couldn't reach a couple people. And I was like, well, the only person left in my, you know, Rolodex here to call is him. And he's the owner of the company. It's 2 a.m. And I'm sure he's not too stoked to get this call. But I called and he answered the call like it was two in the afternoon and was like, what's up? And I was like, well, here's the scenario. And he spent hours with me walking me through this troubleshoot. And I was like, okay. And he's like, all right, cool. And we ended and and you know, we we finished the job. But I think it all, it all, it, then it just filters down. So it's like, I've made those calls at two in the morning. So I can't now be upset with one of my technicians calling me in the middle of the night, mm. you know, or calling me when, you know, it's not a good time or during dinner or whatever. I mean, I'm sure my wife will tell you and begrudgingly that, you know, she just, you just get calls 24 seven Sunday, you know, it doesn't matter. We'll be on a beach taking a call. I'll be in the middle of the night taking a call. And I, you just get so used to it. And I think that I've had the technicians not make those calls enough times. And then you're dealing with an upset customer the next day or a problem that now is a major issue or something that costs a lot of money or whatever that I'm just like, please, 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 please call me. And I think our technicians learn, like, it's the way the company works. You, you don't know something, you give, you give, you, you do a, give a phone call. It's a quick... It's, it doesn't have to be something crazy. And we try and tell them also, like, there's a way to call, you know, in like, don't just call and be like, I don't know what we're doing. And you're like, okay, what's happening? I don't know. Well, okay. That's not useful information. Try and gather some information. You probably know what the questions I'm going to ask and, you know, try and have that information ready. Um, so that way the call is kind of efficient. Cause we do get a lot of calls as the managers and like, it's, it's helpful. Like, okay, good. I'm here. I'm at this site. This is what's happening. This is what I'm installing. Um, here's my question. Great. Takes three minutes. Call is over. We do a lot of video chats. Um, a lot of, I mean, now with technology, we can use, you know, FaceTime or what, whatever, you know, program we're going to use, but uh, walk people through things. So the big, big part of my job is just making sure it stays, you know, everything, everything stays running smoothly on my jobs. I love it because I mean, it is truly always better to make the phone call, no matter where, what level you are. Like, I think that's the hard thing for anybody to start to get through their head is it doesn't matter if you're on the executive team or a field worker, if something's going on that you don't 100% have the answer to, it's better to pick up the phone and call that owner or call that Nets executive or call your field supervisor or manager than, I mean, just leave the job site and say, we'll yeah. get to it later or do something that might be wrong. And that's, you know, like you yeah, said, it could be a, a three thing. minute conversation can completely change the trajectory of a job. Yeah. And it, and in the electrical world, especially, you know, you connect the wrong wire to the wrong thing. It could be pretty disastrous, you know, from a safety perspective, from equipment. And so we're always like, I mean, we have a lot of protocols in place here that like, before you turn anything on, there's a checklist of things you have to do. And if it's an expensive piece of equipment, a manager's involved, like just cause you know, it, things are going to happen and you, you wish we mitigate it as much as humanly possible to try and not, Try and not have those bad things happen. So, yeah, but yeah, I totally agree. It's, no, I I love it. So, I mean, you're right at the forefront of one of the hottest trades right now. For like, yeah, where there's a lot of energy being pushed into creating uh, an environment where people start coming into the electrical industry. What you guys are doing instead of going to college and stuff. And yeah. I mean, I'm a big component of that. I'm a a uh, Marine that spent 13 plus years in residential construction. Like I didn't go to college. So what are you seeing in like, what are some advice that you can give to people out there that are wanting to head in that direction? That's a good, that's a good question. I didn't go to college either for the record. I, you know, pretty much just, you know, I have no, I have no background in construction. And that's the thing I think most people don't 
There isn't really like a background in construction. Usually you've started at some point, maybe a parent was involved in it or a sibling or something like that. But usually everyone's going to start from nothing. So I think sometimes you get the initial hurdle of, of, you know, people coming in like, well, I don't know anything. And it's like every single person at our company didn't know anything when they started. Maybe a few, we try and hire technicians that maybe have some experience, but not a ton you're certified. That's kind of another topic because in California, it, it takes, it's quite a, a feat to find certified technicians. And so those, you know, that's, that's a different topic, but I think that, you know, trade schools are, are good. They're, they're okay. They're not going to be your end all. You will never replace in the field experience with anything. So go to a trade school if you want, that's fine. You know, that's a, that's a route for sure, but definitely just get a job as an, as in whatever field you want to go. So let's say in my industry in, in, in electrical, get a job in, even if you're going to trade school, do it after hours, like go actually, you will never replace in the field experience. You can't, it's one thing we can't shortcut. You can cram all the knowledge about the code and all sorts of things. You can watch YouTube videos to, you know, forever, but you cannot replace experience in the field you can't there's no there's no replacement for it so just doing it and actually seeing a lot of different types of jobs that's the other downfall sometimes is some companies you do one thing you 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 renovate an office building and that's all they do and they renovate office and it's like you end up with a very limited scope of of your knowledge you know how to you know run mc run some you know basic sort of electrical and install outlets and lights and that's what you know how to do and that's that's fine but you will end up kind of pigeonholing yourself into just that. You need to you need to experience a bunch of different types of work to really get a good breadth of. I mean, you don't want to go too widespread because you'll end up being you know you know a little bit about everything. But you know you want to hit different types of jobs. And so I think just getting a job, honestly, <laughs> in the field, and you'll learn. You'll learn. And I, I agree, like, man. When I got out in the Marine Corps. In uh, 2011, I had no construction experience, but I saw this foreman and training ad, like it, it spoke to me. And I mean, now I've done everything from running the jackhammer and being a labor on a crew to running a $20 million a year company. Like, yeah, yeah. And it was, it's all just like, I went and did it. Like I've That's worked, right. I've worked with guys that had construction management degrees. I've worked with guys that didn't graduate high school and it's all like, it's an even playing field That's right. when you're out there. And I, I love that about the construction industry. Cause it really is like, if you just show up and you just learn how to do the job, you're at sell. Like that's what it takes. You're a, you're such a valuable employee in the kitchen. If you're willing to show up pretty much every day. And you're not absolutely like, if you have no mechanical inclination and it's just not naturally, you might have a hard time. But if you have some basic fundamental, just I can put a screw and a, a bolt and a nut together, you know, you're, and you show up, you're like, you're in the top 10% of people. <laughs> just showing up <laughs> is sometimes the hardest thing to get people to, to do, to show up and, and, and carry out a task. And so if you think you can do that, you'll be, you will, you'll be set for life. And That's the other uh, thing. You're always going to have a job. You're, yeah. you're electrician, the electrical frame. I mean, you name any sort of construction industry. They're not like about to replace it with some technology. That's not really coming out. I don't see a robot doing electrical. <laughs> maybe I mean, who, maybe you at never, some point, but you never not, know. not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. But you know what? I, I, I love your point to the fact that when you're like, just like, go apply, go get the job. Like, because yeah. even going to a trade school is a commitment. But one of the great things about the construction industry is you can go work on a job site before you commit to going yes. and doing any of that. So it's like, you yeah. can go see, is this something I want to do? And then once you're there, if you like it, you can then weigh, like, should I go to the trade school as well? Or is my career trajectory just on the job training? This It's an environment that doesn't happen in very many other industries, especially the industries that have the trajectory that the construction industry does for growth and then leadership and management opportunities throughout your career. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be like, I'm going to go to 
I'm going to go to a law firm and just kind of test out being a lawyer. <laughs> nah, I didn't really want to be, you can't be a doctor. You know, it, it is one of the few industries that you can just start and be like, this isn't for you. The other thing is you can also go on a job site and be like, oh, I started as a framer. And you're like, God, I really do actually want to do HVAC or I want to do electrical or I like plumbing or I, you know, whatever it is. I like concrete work. And you can be like, oh, you will, exp you'll kind of, you'll, you're running alongside multiple, uh, pretty much every facet, you know, on a lot of jobs. Uh, so you can usually get a taste and be like, oh, th I actually way more prefer that. I mean, you don't want to jump around too much, but if it's not, if, if what you're doing, if you see something in the same sort of another construction industry, it's, it's not a, it's not a, a far leap to just go to the other one. I mean, you're going to learn how to do kind of a little bit of a lot of things in any trade you're in. Yeah. And, and, and you get started at a young age. You're, like you said, you can get exposure. You go work for a builder or a general contractor. You're going to get exposure to all the different trades. Yeah. And you might say, hey, I don't want to necessarily do everything here. Like, I don't want to be a builder or a contractor. But like you said, I really like the H, what the HVAC guys do. And then you yeah. have the opportunity to go say, hey, I want to work in HVAC. Not very many industries offer the ability to be able to do that kind of stuff. I agree with you. Like you don't want to be doing this your entire career, but as you're getting started and cutting your teeth, like to have the opportunity to be exposed to other realms of the construction industry, it, that's a positive. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, I think, I think that. And I do think that always being willing, even as a manager, like always being willing to do, like if you're just starting, you got to be willing to dig the trench. But I think also 20 years later, you still should be willing to dig the trench if that's what's needed for the job. And I tell people that like, if my boss asked me today, like, hey, we really just need you to go shovel dirt all day. I'd probably say, okay, where are we shoveling? I mean, I wouldn't probably want to do that for every day of my life, but I wouldn't really mind it that much if that's what was needed. And that I feel used like to be some of my favorite times when I got to go back out in the field, like oh, after I, I was it. in, in leadership and totally. running the executive team, like having the opportunity to go back out and actually work with the guys. Cause like, that's where I learned everything. Yeah. Like, Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm always, anytime we get a new foreman or a new manager, I'm always like, you are not to just go sit in your truck. No person <laughs> on a job site wants to look at the manager sitting in their truck in the AC when it's a hundred degrees out. Don't be that person. You gotta be. And I've sweat. never understood that person because I'm not that person. Like no. if you find me on a job site, like shit's getting done. Like, yeah. It's, My hands are dirty. Yeah. Like that's yeah. just what it is. So it's weird. I know some people, I, some people get to a management position. They're like, cool. I've made it. I'm now in the cushy. No, you are now in the most pressure cook spot you've ever been mm -hmm. in. Cause when, when it's going well, it's the crew. It's the crew that did well. And when it, it, when it went wrong, it's you, you know, you're never taking the, you never want to take the glory as the manager, even if really it was you, you it's always the crew that did the great job. So yeah. Yeah. Ne never be that guy sitting in the AC. I love <laughs> it, man. I love it. So uh, what, for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to reach out to you, follow you, learn more about what you're doing, Maybe they're in your area and they're looking to get in the industry. Where's the best places for them to find you, follow you, connect with you? I think our website, southwestelectric.com. I'm sure all our, our socials are in there, you know, LinkedIn, uh, things like that. I'm not a huge social media Instagram guy myself, but um, the company is. Follow us if you want to, if you're looking to work. We're always hiring, you know, good technician. We never stop hiring. Mm. Um, a good technician is, is hard to find, even if you're just, you don't already know it and you just are a good employee. Give us a call. Sh reach awesome, out to HR. Man. We'll, we'll interview you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It was fun. All right, Construction Champions, another episode where we talked about a lot of great things, not just about cutting your teeth in the construction industry, but having a willingness to just start. So if you're somebody listening right now that stumbled upon the Construction Champions podcast because you're thinking about wanting to be in the construction industry and you want to know more about it, when Daniel talked about just applying, just go get that job, like I 100% I believe in that because that's what I did. 
Like we wouldn't be standing here having this conversation right now <laughs> if I wasn't willing to just say, I should go work in construction. Why not? Like I, it appeals to me. I should just go do it. And I just went and did it. And you can as well. And like you said, you just show up. And now for the guys that are out there doing it, in the beginning, we talked about phone calls and being willing to make those phone calls. And I think we all know when that phone call needs to be made and when it doesn't. But for some reason, what ends up happening is we will make the phone call that doesn't need to be made, which aggravates people. You were like, why is this guy pissed off? Well, because you don't, you knew that phone call didn't need to be made because you have it under control. But for some reason, we don't make the phone calls when we know they need to be made. We need to flip that around. We need to understand when we have control of this and when we don't need to reach out to anybody because we understand our job and we can get it done. But we also need to understand that when we do need to reach out to somebody, it's perfectly okay. It doesn't matter. So let's not call somebody and ask a stupid question. Let's call somebody and ask a smart question and then let them know that we're doing the right thing out here. Like Daniel said, send in those pictures, getting your leadership, your management, that next tier, that supervisor involved in what you're doing. That's how you continue to evolve and get that cycle going where you want to take it. So Construction Champions, make sure you go check out our website, constructionchampionspodcast.com, and check out all of our fantastic sponsors that keep the show rocking and rolling. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Hey, Construction Champions, it's your host, Ron Nussbaum here. And I want to talk to you about how you can automate all of your marketing. We've had so many people on here talk about getting the systems in place. Well, we have partnered with Build 12 and Construction Champions podcast. Les O'Hara, the founder, what really excites me is his 30 years in the industry. And now he's built a system to be able to nurture your leads and continue to utilize that. I personally use the system myself. Build 12 is absolutely amazing. There's a lot of value in there. And it's a way to start getting away from Angie's list and all of that kind of stuff and start actually creating your own leads every day and have a system for them. So go on our website Check out the show notes. Go check out Build 12 and what it can do for the front end of your business today. It's absolutely amazing. I highly recommend going and meeting with Les and his son, Devin, and talking to him about what they built for their own business so the rest of the industry can take benefit from that. Here on Construction Champions, we're all about helping each other out. And what is better than contractors helping contractors? I say nothing. So let's go take this to the next level. Go check out Build 12. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Les or his son, Devin. We're here to help. We want to continue to grow the industry.